envelope text is where I can take lettering and put it in a couple of different shapes. Now this was actually a request sent in. Um, and so I'm going to bring in an image to use envelope text with. Let me find it here. There it is. Now, this is my artwork. And basically the question was, how do I do the lettering like in Home Inspection Service? Now, envelope text works two different ways. All right? First, the first way, I'm going to start by just typing in some basic letter. Now, there's my basic lettering right there. I'm going to go in and highlight it. I'm going to go to text, change to, and I have this option down here called envelope text. When I click, now that my lettering has to be highlighted, when I click on envelope text, it wants me to put in a number of points from 4 to 40. The points have to be an even number, okay? So I could do I could do two, four, six, eight, but they have to be even. Alright? I'm gonna start with ten. I'm gonna click on OK. Now ten gives me five points across the top. One, two, three, four, five, and five points across the bottom. They are all independent of each other. So I can come in here and move each point. And my lettering follows those points. The nice thing about using this tool is that once I get it the shape that I want, if I don't like the font, no big deal. Come up here and change it to whatever font I want, and it will continue to follow that shape. Now that's one way that you can use envelope text. The other way, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance to Ray because he's probably not had this part of the class, but the other way that we can use envelope text is a combination of digitizing and lettering. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to select my satin digitizing tool. Okay? Now, this is very important. When I start digitizing my satin stitch, I start on the bottom of the lower left area. I'm starting at the lower left bottom of the H. Point, counterpoint. Okay? Now, typically when I'm digitizing the satin, you remember that I have to think about, well, is this satin stitch getting too wide? Well, here, for this particular application, I really don't care how wide my satin stitch is because I'm not using it, I'm not going to be using it as a satin. I'm using it to create a shape for my lettering to follow. Okay? So, curve, curve, and I'm actually just putting in curve points, and I'm digitizing the shape of this lettering as a satin stitch. Now, once I get to the end, I right click twice. Now, I select my satin. I'm going to hide my image for just a second. So it's got a box around it. T for text. Pick a font. Start typing in my lettering.
Now, I'm going to show my image again. Oh, I, I put an S on there. Let me get rid of that S. Okay. Now, at this point, I don't want that satin stitch anymore. Okay? So, I can select it and delete it. And there's my lettering in that shape. So I left off the C. That's okay. That's actually good. I'm glad I left off that C. I can still go in here, click in between my I and the E, and add my C. All right? And there's my lettering in that envelope shape. Now I can modify this and manipulate it. If I zoom in, highlight my lettering, look here. You know, before I went to envelope text and I told it how many points I wanted and I just guessed at 10. Here, I've got all the points that I need and if I want to change something, I can manipulate it, and it will change it. So if I need to make some minor adjustments, it's not a problem. And I can also highlight it and say, yeah, you know what, I really didn't like that font. I'd rather have this font right here. No problem. Okay? So that's envelope. That's text envelope. All right? You digitize a satin. You have to do point, counterpoint, digitize your satin stitch, select it, and then you can have your lettering follow within the points that you put in.